Okay, so uh, in this lecture, we're going to be looking at uh, specifically at the hormone cortisol. Uh, first of all, where is uh, cortisol produced? It's produced uh, specifically in the adrenal cortex, and within the adrenal cortex, it's uh, made from the middle layer called the zona fasciculata. Now, um, 90 to 95 percent of this hormone is actually bound either to transcortin or it's bound to albumin. Um, and this is why it has a uh, high half-life of about 60 to 90 minutes. And of course, this is a, a hormone which is, causes chronic stress. And so you're going to want this to be uh, out there for a while. Now. Um, Let's take a look at how it's regulated uh, real quickly. So let's look at the regulation of cortisol. Um, the first thing we have is th that affects cortisol is going to be the um, hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus has an area called the paraventricular nuclei, nuclei which produces um, CRH. CRH is then going to go, uh, and of course this is all connected to the um, pituitary, CRH is then going to go down and activate the ACTH. And it's going to do this via um, the pathway that's involved intracellularly is called the cyclic AMP pathway. Then, AC, uh, then when you have, you look at your kidneys here, we have the uh, adrenal gland here, and here's the medulla, and uh, here's the cortex. ACTH is then going to go into the adrenal gland, um, and again via cyclic AMP, it's going to lead to the release of cortisol. Cortisol then negatively inhibits cyclic AMP and negatively inhibits. Uh, CRH. Now, uh, in general, what um, ACTH is the main actor here. Uh, whenever there is any stress uh, or infection, that's going to trigger ACTH. Also, it, it does uh, kind of match up to circadian rhythm. Uh, it's high in the mornings and it's uh, low in the evenings. So that's uh, generally about the regulation of uh, cortisol. Now let's um, kind of shift focus here. Let's look at the uh, mechanism of action. Now a good way to understand this overall is um, cortisol, it's a glucocorticoid. So all it wants to do is it wants to do gluconeogenesis. It wants to make glucose. Um, and so it'll do anything to make that happen. So it's going to convert all your protein and your lipids and it's going to just make it into glucose. And so where does it get the protein from? Well, of course your muscle uh, and other um, parts of your body, uh, it's going to take out the amino acids and it's going to give it to the liver. So that the liver, the liver can then uh, cause it to turn into glucose. The other thing is when you have the glucose, um, you don't want it to go up into the muscle or anything, so you're also going to decrease insulin sensitivity, and this is called um, adrenal diabetes. So this is where that term comes from because it decreases the sensitivity of it. Now, um, interestingly enough, remember we said that we want to get rid of a lot of amino acids and a lot of lipids, so a lot of, uh, and if you pay attention, uh, a lot of inflammatory processes are uh, censored around having proteins or lipids. So uh, let's just go through those real quick. So if we talk about um, lipids, uh, it's going to decrease uh, phospholipase A2. So then you're going to get a decrease in prostaglandins and leukotrienes, and that's going to lead to um, a decrease in migration and phagocytosis. So that's your uh, first thing right there. Uh, the other thing we're going to have is we're going to decrease interleukin 2. That's that's generally gonna that's what that's gonna do is gonna cause decrease in T cell 
uh, maturation. So you're going to have a decrease in T cell. We also are going to decrease interleukin 1, which is going to then decrease fever uh, as well. Um, the other thing that we have is we're going to have decreased uh, adhesion of neutrophils. So this actually is going to increase the amount of neutrophils, but this isn't because of increased production, it's just because they're not uh, sitting at the edges as much as they used to. And um, some other things that it does is it's going to uh, decrease the capillary permeability and it even stabilizes the lysosome so that uh, there's decreased activation of the immune system. Uh, condition that it's used generally um, because an inflammatory condition is going to be rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatic fever, and uh, acute glomerular nephritis. Um, so this is generally just real quick breakdown of the mechanism of actions. Let's look at some diseases real quick. Um, let's first look at uh, hyperfunction. Uh, and this is basically one disease uh, which is called Cushing's. Cushing's syndrome. Cushing's syndrome is basically having a high level of cortisol. Um, what's the main cause of, of uh, high cortisol? It's actually iatrogenic. Uh, this is just basically uh, taking medicine. Uh, this is going to be the most common. Now, um, if we look at pathological causes, uh, there's going to be three main ones. It could either be at the pituitary, like a pituitary adenoma. We can have an adrenal adenoma, or it can be some type of ectopic production. Now, what do we have in pituitary and ectopic? Well, they're going to be secreting uh, increasing ACTH, and oops, that in turn is going to lead to an increase in cortisol. But with adrenal, you're going to be increasing cortisol and that in turn has a decrease effect on uh, effect of decreasing ACTH. Now, uh, common uh, places where you get ectopic is going to be generally, uh, generally squamous cell carcinomas of the lung. Uh, you can also get it of the thymus, and you can also get it of the thyroid. So any one of these can then lead to ectopic secretion of uh, ACTH and then lead to increased cortisol. Uh, let's look at some of the symptoms. Now, the way we divide the symptoms is basically by its functions. So we know it affects proteins, it affects lipids, and it affects glucose. And also, as we can see here, it affects the ACTH. So let's just go down one by one and kind of uh, break down its effects. So let's look at the first one here. Um, let's look at the effect that it has on um, lipids. So on lipids, what effects do we see? Uh, this is going to be basically going to be redistributing uh, fats. So you're going to get trunkal obesity. Uh, you're going to get a moon facies where you, you, the face becomes really round and you get a, a hump on the back. So this is uh, briefly what you get with lipids. Now with the proteins, again remember it's going to break down proteins to give it to the liver so that they can make more glucose. So where does it get that protein from? Well one place is going to be the muscle. So you're going to de get decrease uh, muscle. And the other thing is going to be from collagen. And since there's going to be decreased collagen, there's going to be easy bruising and you get abdominal striae because it's just the skin is getting weak and uh, it's, it's breaking apart. Um, now that we look at those two, now let's look at glucose. So with glucose, what are we going to have? Of course we're going to have hyperglycemia, so increased glucose. The other thing is we're going to get decreased insulin sensitivity, so we call that um, adrenal diabetes. The, other, the final thing that we're going to be uh, having is going to be an increase in ACTH. Now, uh, what is this going to lead to? Um, well, this is going to, um, ACTH not only activates cortisol, but it also activates the androgens. And so this is going to be why some patients will have hirsutism. Okay, and um, it also can lead to activation of, all do, uh, of, of the aldosterone pathway. Of course, it doesn't do that, but it does activate the weak mineral of corticoids. And it cannot, um, cannot activate aldosterone because there's no uh, angiotensin 2, but you do get hypertension because of these uh, weak mineral of uh, corticoids that are being... Um, so now let's talk about how we would diagnose. Real quick, let's just talk about how we would diagnose uh, Cushing's. Um, first, you're going to do something called the low-dose and high-dose dexamethasone test. So in the low-dose... 
Um, if you get, um, if you if you don't get any depression, um, if it's still elevated after you give a low dose, then I definitely tell you something is wrong. However, if it does get depressed after a low dose, that means uh, everything is fine. There is no uh, problem with ACTA. Then what we'll do is because again, even though we know it's elevated, we don't know if it's pituitary related, adrenal related, or ectopic related. So then what we'll do is we'll give a high dose dexamethasone. Because dexamethasone should um, decrease uh, ACTA, which should decrease cortisol. Now, then if it goes, if, if the, the cortisol level goes down, then this means it's pituitary. However, if it still stays up, this could be ectopic or it could be adrenal related. Now, how do you differentiate between these two? Well, if it's ectopic, you'll have high ACTH. And if it's adrenal, you'll have low ACTH. So it's uh, fairly easy to figure out uh, once you've um, uh, done the high dose dexamethasone. Now, let's look at a, uh, another type, which is going to be adrenal insufficiency. Um, there's two types of adrenal insufficiency. Uh, one is acute, one is chronic. Chronic is known as Addison's. But uh, let's first take a look at acute. Now, uh, one of the causes of acute uh, can be the, the one of the main uh, one of the causes that can, can be is going to be uh, abrupt withdrawal of corticosteroids. So what happens is when when someone is on uh, corticosteroids, uh, they're undergoing adrenal atrophy. And so when you take it off suddenly, they cannot uh, recover that corticosteroids fast enough because the adrenal has been uh, so depressed. The other one is going to be uh, Waterhouse Fredrickson. Waterhouse Fredrickson. So uh, in Waterhouse Fredrickson, this is related to uh, Neisseria meningi uh, meningitides. Uh, and what happens is basically, it just if you the patient becomes septic with with this and it just causes adrenal hemorrhage um, and so it will be a sudden drop in cortisol and um, of course we said stress uh, activates uh, cortisol and if you're infected that's a stressful situation and usually what happens is they're going to increase uh, the levels of thromboplastin um, this quickly uses up all of their coagulation factors so they get to DIC and they can get to shock and then die so this is definitely a huge emergency um, the other thing we're going to look at now is going to be chronic and again, chronic is known as Addison's. Within chronic, there could be two different types. There could be a primary or a secondary. Uh, let's first look at the primary causes. Uh, one is going to be autoimmune destruction. Uh, you also have uh, it related to any type of cancer metastasis. Uh, it's also related to TB and AIDS. And it could be related to... Um, Congenital adrenal hyperplasias uh, that with that 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiencies, 21 alpha hydroxylase deficiencies, and 11 alpha hydroxylase deficiencies. And usually, when you have any of these, uh, it affects all three uh, layers of the cortex, but not the medulla. So you you don't get uh, decrease in norepinephrine or epinephrine. Um, the symptoms that you would expect uh, from primary. Again, it's just going to be related to the different uh, things involved. So one is going to be, of course, you're going to get decreased cortisol. And so what happens when you have decreased cortisol is um, the patient is going to have fasting hypoglycemia. Because remember, um, cortisol increases uh, gluconeogenesis, which is what you need while you're fasting. Um, the other one is going to be um, they cannot handle stress. And actually, stress can be a killer for them uh, as well. Uh, as far as uh, from the immune side, uh, they're going to have increased neutrophils, but everything else will be low. So you have low lymphocytes, basophils, and even histamine, and monocytes and eosinophils and all that. Uh, the other effect that it's going to have, again, all, uh, all of them are related. Uh, all of the layers are affected, so you're going to get decreased aldosterone. And so if you have decreased aldosterone, what are you going to get? Well, you're going to get decreased sodium, increased potassium, and uh, protons. So that's going to give you metabolic acidosis. This is going to lead to decrease in uh, blood volume, 
which is going to lead to decreased cardiac output, and then you're going to get shock. So that's uh, really dangerous as well. The final thing that we need to take into consideration is the fact that if you have low cortisol, you get decreased increased ACTH, and this can lead to um, skin pigmentation. So this is for primary. For secondary, uh, what usually happens in a secondary cause is you have a pituitary deficiency. So you have decreased pituitary, uh, so that's just going to decrease the ACTH, and of course that's going to decrease your cortisol. In these ones, um, your you're, gonna, you're not going to have no skin pigmentation, and obviously your aldosterone will be normal. So that's what you have there. Uh, we're going to uh, finalize this uh, with a discussion about the drugs uh, related to corticosteroids. So you have uh, many different types of drugs uh, related here. Uh, the first type is going to be hydrocortisone, uh, prednisolone, uh, triamcelene, or triamcinolone, uh, sorry, uh, dexamethasone, and uh, beclamethasone. Uh, mainly, uh, what are they used for? Uh, if you look at their uses, uh, they're generally going to be used as, uh, of course, we want to use them in Addison's to replace the cortisol that they've lost. But you could also use it in asthma, and it's also used as an immunosuppressant. Uh, what are the adverse effects related to this? Of course, uh, the first thing you could obviously think of is Cushing's. Uh, type syndrome that we talked about earlier. Um, this can also lead to peptic ulcers. So you need to keep that in mind. Um, it could, of course, it can lead to adrenal diabetes by decreasing insulin sensitivity and adrenal atrophy. And this is why you do not want to do an uh, abrupt withdrawal.